YouTube, it is the top 16 of the Meta Weekly every single week, bro. If you're watching me live on Twitch and or on YouTube, we like to leak during the tournament stream, so make sure to show up live. Without further ado, by watching, liking, commenting, subscribing, doing that as long as you can, I appreciate that greatly. Hajime. There can only be one winner, and you're looking at it. Let's go. Just ending the turn right away, not even bothering. OG BG, I am so sorry this happened to you. We got the Wakashi. So the question is, when do we Ash? When do we Veiler? So we're going to be identifying when we should be making those plays. Searching for an additional card because our hand is already pretty damn good here. You would think you'd be searching for the Soul Piercer, but the Wagon could grab the Piercer. Wait, what is this? This locks you in a Super Heavy Samurai only, and we're negating it. Huh. But we negate I don't think you negate this. Uh, okay. Uh, Bombo's going for lethal damage. That's why. Bombo's like simple lethal. I summon from the deck. I equip the soul horns. I wham bam. Thank you, ma'am, for game. So I guess we had to negate this because it is 8,000 damage. Yeah. We do have game. Going for simple game. I don't That's kind of scary. Locking us in a super heavy samurai to try to go for game. I, you know, I, is that the way? Is that the way? Hmm, 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 hmm. is going to be equipping from the graveyard as we now have our Omni negate. It's gonna have to attribute itself in order to negate. The Wagon goes to defense. This is where you would be able to Ash, stopping them from grabbing the Soul Piercer, equipping onto the Wagon to then make the Scarecrow. Scarecrow is here, ready to discard a card to reborn from the graveyard as Soul Piercer searches for a motorbike. Motorbike's gonna ensure that we can make a Baron to Floor by reborning it from the graveyard with the, our, our Excel Start of Synchro. Discard Maxi, not going to, to need that, as we now, you know, it's like if you would want to Ash the Soul Peacemaker, which would be the ideal Ash, it gets negated by Baron to Floor anyway, so it just, there really isn't a good time to Ash, because you can't. Reborn the Motorbike. And you think, oh, you could Ash here. You can't even Ash here because we're chain link blocking it with the Wakashi. Yeah, we do have a theory on the gate, which commits more, but we're pretending like what if Therion wasn't there, you still don't really have a good Ash. And the Therion also has to tribute itself. Reborn, Shokan, making that Baron de Floor. Just like that Peacemaker onto this. This would be a really good Ash that we are just gonna get negated on by the Baron de Floor. And the Therion is also an additional negate. How, when, how do you disrupt? You have to max it, you have to draw. Like, I don't really know what else to say. You have to have one of those two cards. Scales reborning from the graveyard here. Shokan into the Clifford Genius. Clifford Genius, if we get to, so we're not playing the Ballista version, it looks like. Interesting. And we only Pendulum Summon for one. We're just gonna go for easy game. We have easy game. We're not gonna have to Theory on negate anything. And just like that, taking this into game number two. Purely just breaking it up like crazy. What a brick. Let's go. We have a much better hand here. The power of a purely hand is based on how many quick play spells we have. So one to gate, two spin. Very nice. Beauty with that draw one. And we are going to be ready with that Monster Negate. Ideally, the Monster Negate will be used on the Scarecrow. Scarecrow will be the way. Wagon. I don't know about negating the Wagon here, but we're going to negate it anyway as we go into the Leap. Leaping onto the Beauty into a double spin play. Chain the Maxi to the Leap. So we do not even care about using the Called By. Called By is going to be good for disruption. For Scales and Scarecrow trying to reborn a monster from the graveyard. Now, the trick here is if you chain called by to the Therion, you got tricked because it does not stop the summon of the Therion. Do not called by in response to it. Big mistake. Double spin. When are we spinning? We're spinning right now. Okay. Going to our Scarecrow play, if we discard, the called by is gonna happen. This is where we get tricked. Uh-oh, is called by gonna happen? Even if the ex Pili Norse spins the graveyard, it's still gonna summon. We didn't get tricked. We did it. But, uh, you know, the Therion can now negate the called by, so it, you know, kind of goes even with it anyway. 
Uh, did not want to Therion negate, you know, because you want your Therion to be back in the deck, and the Therion does not destroy, so it does make sense. Okay. Called by in response to the Scarecrow discarding to Reborn the Piercer, but we got the Peacemakers. <laughs> it's like... We're out of disruption, and they're still fully cooking. This doesn't even stop them. They have summoned scales, reborn the... Well, uh, actually, we don't have a piercer because it did, did get banished. So stopping this for the rest of the turn, it is kind of disruptive. But uh, we could still cook a little bit. We're still cooking. Summoning the scales, reborn from the graveyard, the wagon. We negated the wrong effect of wagon. We negated the effect of going into defense, not the hard once per turn to search. So that was a big mistake with the pretty memory, the pretty purely. This is what we needed to negate. Now, this is negated for the rest of the turn because of the called by. Uh oh, this is a Zeus play. And the Therion that we shuffled back in the deck, we could search it without even detaching. No detach, still four material Zeus. Let's go. And the My Friend Purely is not going to trigger because the ex Nor is leaving the field with the My Friend Purely and the Happy Memory can't protect you from destruction because you're being sent to the graveyard and we still have another field wipe. Sleepy Memory into the Lily. I guess we wipe the field on My Friend and because of that we want to activate Lily early so that they wipe the Lily then we follow up with My Friend. Yep. That's exactly what we do. Forcing out the field wipe right here, right now. Why didn't we draw? Because draw phase. So by draw phasing the Lily, it plays around draw and Lockbird, which is everywhere. You have to draw phase your searches. Make sure you do that. All right, well done. Ensuring the My Friend Purely is going to go through. We're going to have to YOLO with regular Lily, though. Yeah, we have to randomly add something good off of the Lily. Wait, wait, what? Oh, you know, it is random, but, and we only have two. Oh my gosh, I can't believe that. I can't believe we can't guarantee a purely to our hand cause it's freaking semi-limited. What the hell? And then even if we did add it, the Droll and Lockbird would have stopped it from randomly adding a card to our hand to then go into our purely exceed. I guess we're getting two owed. Yup, that, that just sucks. That kind of sucks. Hmm. We triple disrupted Super Heavy Samurai through a Monster Negate, double spin, and they were still able to Zeus, plus have a really good follow-up turn, which is happening right now. The power of Super Heavy Samurai. Uh, we misplayed by not max seeing or drawing, not drawing it. So uh, make sure you get better at that. Uh, I guess make it a bigger priority to get the multiple draws off of Sleepy Memory. Draw one is better than negate a monster if that draw one is a droll or max C, right? I'm joking, but am I joking? Very well done. 2 0 victory. Thunder Dragon. Or Thunder Dragon. Interesting plays here. Granted Beast is gonna be recycling the regained. Let's talk about what's actually happening here. We can't add from the deck, so we can't Nadir Servant, because it is, you have to add. You could brand it in High Spirits, it is optional to add. And the fusion deployment into an Albaz, it will be negated by a Poly USA. Grass is gonna be big. Regained could reborn a Bestial. Beast could then pop a card in the field. And the Colossus does not stop them from adding a branded fusion to the hand because we could add it from the graveyard instead. Now, uh, the Nadir Servant could add from the graveyard also. So Nadir Servant, after using grass, it, it can be used. We can use it. Okay. Yeah. Actually fully playing around the Colossus. Very well done. Oh, that is a lot of cards milled. We have 31 cards in the graveyard here. Anything crazy. 
Kit in the Grave, White could be recycled, Brandon Red could be recycled, Lubellion in the Grave, Sword could add a Banished Albaz monster back to the hand, Serenir will trigger to send a Branded Fusion if it's not already in the Grave, or to add it back with the Retribution that's in the Grave. We already have the Branded Fusion, so it looks like we're probably not gonna even activate the Serenir. I don't think we really need to. Albion could send another monster from a card from the deck to the graveyard, but uh, I don't think we need to. Let's go. We milled everything that we needed. Got a Brian High Spirits, which could just add back during the end phase as I set. Wow. N playing around Ash. Oh, yeah, sure. You know, you would think they should Ash the call the grass, but they could be holding on to Branded Fusion still. Hmm. Not Branded Fusioning. Did we mill too many Albazes to do a Branded Fusion play? Is that why we added that instead? I guess we're just preferring the branded white because everything we want is already in the grave. Chain the max C. Call by the grave, finger the C. You will not be drawing per special summon here. Now this will be making the branded beast become live. I, why are we not using our bestials? Because we can't. We can't bestial banish the Albaz in response to the branded in white because there's no monster on the opposing side of the field. All right, let's go, let's go. Quadra negate with the Apollo USA. Quadra. Rinbrum is here, which could negate the Apollo USA. Regained is double triggering to reborn the Magna Hut and also return a banished card back. Oh! Are we, uh, yeah, you don't get the draw because we're gonna add that card back to the hand instead. A good way to play around the regained. Interesting. Now, the Rinbrum does not get disrupted by the Branded Beast because we have an opening in the graveyard to protect it from destruction. So we, we think it does pop it, but it don't. It don't pop. It is protected. It's fine. Very well done. Apollo is a negate only once per chain, so once we try to negate something, the Rinbrum could then negate the Apollo USA. Albaz forcing the activation of the Apollo, which we are going to negate, and spin back Colossus or the Apollo. We lose our entire field here, don't we? Spin and fuse. Ain't no way. Spin back and fuse with Colossus. We broke the field completely. Beast can't be used again. Zero. Oh my gosh. We actually did it and we needed grass to do it. So, you know, grass is very powerful. That's what it do. Adding a Quen. We haven't even normal summoned yet. Unfreaking believable Quem sending a Quem. The dear servant locking ourselves out of the extra deck for the rest of the turn, but we don't really care. 7,000 damage. We don't have lethal because the double bestial, as the Mirror Jade could banish just one of them. We are going to be chaining our Serenir to banish the Mercurier, which triggers on banish to search the deck for an Albaz monster. Is that really what we want to be banishing? We're not going to be activated. I think we're out of cards to even add. Uh, kits in the graveyard already. To battle, we go. We're not going to even banish it. I think the Drew Swarm is public knowledge, right? We saw him at it. We knew that that card is in the hand, so we didn't want to use our Mirror Jade. But uh, don't you at least want to force lethal, but, you know, force them to summon it, potentially? Maximus double sending from both players extra decks here. Is that triggering anything for we lost our Zeus and Elf? Now it was our own choice. We sent those cards by uh, we wanted to. Now the Albion is setting up a branded loss. That's not going to be doing anything good because the unfortunate situation is our branded banishment and our branded red. They're both in the grave. So the grass did kind of hurt our follow up disruption. And didn't we send a Titan clad? No, we sent uh, Alba Lin We did. Titan Clad had nothing to summon during the end phase. You would normally summon a Quem during the end phase. Druid Swarm banishing our Colossus to trigger the regain to return it back into the extra deck here. We're going to be using our Mirror Jade to banish the Druid Swarm before it's sent to the graveyard with the effect of the Lubalian. We're going to send it to the graveyard with the Beast to then not only pop a card in the field, but then send another card in the field to the grave. Goodbye to the Quem, so it does not trigger to attempt to reborn something like the Mirror Jade. We're gonna send the Rinbrum. Now Rinbrum can reborn itself from the graveyard or the Albaz. Titan could just be fused into. I guess we're waiting. We're waiting on the Rinbrum play. When are we Rinbrumming? I, we're not really forced to do it. Mirror Jade activating to wipe out the field, triggering the effect of the Alibur to come forth and summon during the damage step to negate the Titan from popping cards in the fields. We have an active Rinbrum, but we're waiting. 
we can only Rin Brum during the opponent's end phase. So now, are we doing it yet? Albion adding an opening. Rin Brum, not a trigger effect. It's a quick effect whenever we want. Using the Albaz. On summon, discard Fuse with the Titan. Drop the lit. Now, what do you normally do with Droplet? You set it, but knowing that Rin Brum's in the graveyard, we saved it for the Rin Brum play. Serenir banishing the Magna Hut to come forth and summon. All right, Droplet. And uh, the Regained is targeting the monster we want to summon. So the monster that we targeted did just get banished by the Serenir, so no summon. Wiping out the full field with the Mirror Jade Lingering effect, triggering the effect of the Lupine to add back the Magna Hut, which we're going to summon within the same turn. It uh, did not activate during this turn. It was during the first turn we did that. Going into turn four. Rarely ever happens. Setting up the Branded Lost. Going to Drew Swarm, banish our Zeus to then recycle it back in the action deck with our Regained. Maybe drawing into a Hand Trap. Now with the Branded Beast, this is double disruption with the Druid Swarm. Very well done, top decking that Ash Blossom. Could send Druid Swarm to pop and then send another monster, but Super Poly is coming into play. Using both Bistials into our Borload Furious. So this is where Druid Swarm sends the Borload, right? It can't because of the Branded Lost stopping the Druid Swarm. It stops its trigger. No trigger effect. Damn. Countered the Beast. Countered the Drew Swarm, just like that. Can't change the Super Poly to Beast, and then can't trigger the Drew Swarm because of Lost. Dark for Dark, and we have no hand traps whatsoever, so let's speed this up. If we activate a Thunder Dragon card in the hand, we want to be the direct chain link with Titan to pop any card in the field non-targeting. Now, it's actually a good Ash here because I think we're going to add regular Thunder Dragon to pop two cards in the fields. Yep, but then we get the Thrust. Thrust for Allura Darkness maybe, draw two. Maybe draw into that Thunder Dragon play. <laughs> we just, wait, we Ashed and then Surrendered. Yeah, like, we know we're going to lose. We know it, our first turn was not a brick. We had a good hand. Colossus floodgated our hand. Grass is going to get ashed. I do not think so. Negate. We still have Foolish, Tragedy. We have Alubur already in our hand. We're going to get Mercury, which can be banished with the Serenir. Then the Mercurier is going to be searching our deck for an Albaz monster, giving us the Albion, which could send any branded card from the deck to the graveyard to then draw a card. Get that draw with the Fallen Albaz now in the grave. We are going to follow up with adding our branded fusion, which the Grass ate the Ash for. As we send our Lubelian Bistial to make our Albion, this does make us play into Bistial. But actually, we played around Bistial. I, it, it's small little detail. But Abomod, being a top tier branded player, knows that what happens when your card gets Bistealed or DD Crowed, the Albion line of sending Lubellion is not safe. So he specifically sent a second Albaz to play around a potential Bistealed. It's very minute detail, but it is important. Make a new Lubellion, which could discard the sword, which could recycle the banished Mercurier back to the hand into our Mirror Jade. This is very well set up. We have Mercurier Monster Negate, Mirror Jade Monster Banish. We have Albion's gonna set up a Disruption. And we are also gonna be setting up a Lubellian branded spell or trap into the back row, which will be our branded loss if we fusion summon with our banishment. We could add even more Disruption. Generally, the Lost would be adding a Mercurier, but you know, okay, we have a Mercurier already. Thunder Dragon add Thunder Dragon, up to two Thunder Dragons. We're gonna add both of them. The Solar is going to attempt to send a Thunder Dragon monster from the deck to the grave here. And it was a debate. We actually didn't care to use our called by because we didn't need it. We are making our Thunder Dragon Colossus. Now, with the Colossus, we're going straight into the Titan. And if we had more Thunder Dragons in our deck, we could then add a Thunder Dragon to pop a card in the field with the Titan. Come forth, Hawk. Mirror Jade's gonna non-target banish as the droplet negates. I do not think so. Now, 
we could, if we wanted to be spicy, we could chain banishment if we had a monster that was summonable. The Albion is summonable, but then we would lose our Mirror Jade. We could banish the Mirror Jade to dodge the droplet and it would still banish. We are going to be triggering the Hawk to return any amount of cards in our hand back into the deck, returning the Thunder Dragons back, ensuring that we could use the effect of the Titan to get pop in. Albaz is going to be fusing with the Titan before it could activate to pop a card in the field. Call by the Grave is stopping the banishment play, so we can't summon and then fuse with either side of the field. This will be interesting. Discarding Nibiru to fuse with the Titan, just as we are replacing our hand. Maybe we could draw into a disruption. Return to draw two. We needed that Druid Swarm to banish the Albaz, stopping the Rimbrum from reborning it, stopping the Albaz from fusing with the Titan. We also have another call by the grave, but it is too late. Goodbye to our fields. Damn. That does suck. Both cards could have stopped this from happening. Brain lost, grabbing an Albion. As I, we said earlier, the Mercurial was already in the hand, so the loss did not turn into extra disruption. Now banishing the Albaz as we are big enough to take out the Mirror Jade. We are going to, uh, was the Mirror Jade not fusion summoned? If it's not fusion summoned, it would not activate in the graveyard to wipe out the field during the end phase. Got the Branded and High Spirits off the top of the deck. Lubellion setting up a beast to pop any card in the field within the main phase. Goodbye to Lubellion as we could resummon it with the Serenir or Albion being sent to the grave here. Call by the Grave is going to be banishing the Mirror Jade, stopping its effect for this turn and the next one if we were to summon a new one. Very nice. Now, some people play just one Mirror Jade. We do have two. We are randomly drawing one off of the Albion sending Retribution, which could recycle the Branded Fusion in the grave. Serenir sending opening to protect our fusion monsters from being destroyed by card effect. Fusion deploying our Albaz to discard and fuse into a Lubellion here. Or a Borlord Furious, even better. Two Dark Dragons makes it. Triggering the loss to grab a Quem. We have not used up our normal summon yet, but we have clear, perfect, lethal damage. Don't even need to summon the Quem for game. Thank you, Kid Art. Thank you, Abomod. Both of you are great. I do want to highlight again that, yes, it, the normal play of sending Lubalian and Albaz makes you susceptible to DD Crow and Bestial. So even though you're not really adding to your play, you're giving yourself extra protection by getting a second Albaz into the graveyard. Or if you have one already in the hand, it's even more protected. Ariana, clock to the hand here will allow to make our welcome, big welcome activatable. The turn it is set. We'll be chaining that maxi to it. And we are going to be summoning at least three times here, I'm thinking. The clock could be summoned from the graveyard off of the Torby. So on summon one, number two, randomly pop a card from the hand. Goodbye to the TTT. Setting up the Labyrinth Labyrinth. We're going to be recycling our big welcome, not using Torby right here, right now, which would just be four summons. Or no, Torby actually wouldn't even be active. It would just be summoning the clock back in the field or adding itself back to the hand. We are discarding that dead Nibiru, giving us our much needed circular, circular sending from the deck to the graveyard, the Sigma. Sigma is attempting to reborn from the graveyard, successfully doing so, triggering the circular, not using our big welcome to wipe out the circular. So we have a lot of disruption here. We could non-target pop any card in the field and the labyrinth lovely could also pop another card in the field or a card in the hand you think the ash counters the big welcome but it doesn't because lovely stops you from chaining your ash can't chain alan burtz is going to be activating on summon so we can't stop it from activating here i guess we're gonna wait just wait it up we just wait for a link to get popping right first commitment to a link two we're gonna not activate big welcome we're gonna spin it back with compulse not waiting with lovely to pop another card in the field we're just gonna go for that random pop taking out the ash which uh, was dead grab the i meet you now we are going to be wiping out the normal summon but we could reborn it with uh nothing actually we could use i meet you in the field spell so we're trying to stop them from adding a field spell that they already have which they generally play three of. So this is the issue with randomly popping a card in the hand instead of waiting. Grab in the, we're out of disruption now. That's it. No more disruption. 
and we didn't Torby early to then trigger Torby to summon itself onto the field off of a monster leaving the field from a trap effect. That's kind of interesting. You know, I would think that we would have been Torbying even on the first turn, maybe Torby, for a Welcome Labyrinth, right? It, and now they're popping off, it, and we have zero ways to stop it. Nothing. Now, don't forget, Circular has a lingering restriction for the rest of the turn. We can only attack with one monster. So if we don't set up a one-turn kill with one monster, all the bodies on the field are not going to matter. Buru to the hand here. We have the Transcode Talker. We're going to summon the Buru first, sending from the deck to the grave the Gachiri. Now, Gachiri wants to be reborn with a the Firewall Link or with your Splash Mage. We have Dark Templar. We could Chain Link block Dark Templar with the Lady. So this is where you Chain Lady or Torby. So activate, Chain Torby, Chain Lady, and they can only summon two bodies from the grave. Did not Chain Link block. Damn. Okay, move on over, get an extra body onto the field here. Shokan, 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 making the Wind Pegasus, which could pop the field spell here. Buru reborning the Pakari. Goodbye to the fields. As we now link this up into our Firewall Dragon. Firewall Dragon recycling the Ash and the Graveyard back to our hand here. As we now link this up into a G Golem to reborn the Transcode Talker for some massive damage, but not lethal. Double 3400 attack. Link Decoder. Linking this all up into our Firewall Singularity. Link Decoder reborning from the graveyard here. Not lethal. One attack, that's it. Singularity, as I said, reborning the Gachiri from the graveyard as you now show Khan into a dark fluid with a double monster negate, even within the same turn, and it's completely unaffected from all other card effects. Now we're gonna be using the Lady, which I, I think, you you know, at least Torby or Lady, chain link block in the monster uh, in response to the, uh, what's the card again? Forgetting the names now. The Dark Templar and the Dark Infant play. That's what you want to chain link block so it does not get to move on over. So what are the disruptions here? The Singularity has the effect of being able to spin two cards on the field back to the hand. And then we have double monster negate unaffected from everything. And we have the Ash Blossom, which will be able to negate and affect the search. Do you negate the Ariana? Maybe in a simplified game state, it's okay to negate it, or if you have something like an Impermanence or a Veiler or the Dark Fluid negate, but not Ash. Ash is much better used on the Big Welcome. Chaining the Lady, both negates, done, that's it. You are negated on your Ariana and your Lady. We're gonna chain Torby, setting up our Welcome Labyrinth onto the field here. Torby could be triggered if we use the big welcome to spin back our Ariana to summon itself onto the field. Clock's gonna be triggered from the Torby being activated to add itself in the graveyard back to the hand or to be special summoned. But only while in the hand can we discard it to use a newly set trap this turn. Welcome Labyrinth attempting to summon from the deck, not from the grave. So if you don't use more than one lovely, you can't reborn that lovely. And as I said, we have the once per turn effect to spin up to two cards on the field, including back row, back to the hand. No longer under the restriction of circular, only allowing one attack per turn, lethal damage. Very interesting. You know, even if we chain link blocked the Dark Templar, we still would have had a great field. Pot of E, come to me, holy moly, set five pass, ain't no way. Uh, we can't play through this, no way. Solemn Judgment, negate the summon. No activation to search your deck, nothing. Now we're gonna be searching for our circular play, which Psalm Judgment cannot negate the summon of circular. And uh, I guess we D barrier stop exceeding, but then they could link. D -bear the thing is, you may want to wait for them to commit to the Allenbert to just negate the Allenbert, right? Because then they have less plays to just link summon. But we have Solemn Judgment to just pop the, to negate the link summon anyway. Uh, we have so much here. 
the divine dogmatic of punishment's gonna pop two cards. <laughs> Pop two cards, we can pop a card with Big Welcome, we can negate a summon with Psalm Judgment. We still have about four disruptions, we're using two of them right now. But, oh wait, we didn't even send the Entis, we sent a Wind Pegasus instead. So if any of our cards are destroyed, we're going to shuffle card your opponent controls back in the deck. Equation Reborn, ready with Psalm Judgment on the Splash Mage, right? No, we're not going to even do it yet, we're going to set up with the lady instead of popping with the lovely we could set up the clock but we're not going to do that lovely return pop the splash mage it's not a trigger effect so it's going to get popped before it activates we are under maxi here we already used up our normal summon and without having to use our second solemn judgment we're good labyrinth definitely has this game lovely recycling dogmatica punishment i think it's wild that lovely and lady they interact with non-labyrinth traps. Is that something that should have been allowed? Is that too broken or what? Chaining, welcome, summoning our Ariana. Ariana searching our deck for any labyrinth card here. The field spell would be good if we play it, which I do remember we are playing it. There it is. Now our labyrinth traps will be able to non-target pop any card in the field, which will then also trigger the lovely to pop another card in the field or in the hand if we pop a monster. Unfreaking believable. This is too much. There's no way. <laughs> Again, solemn judgment. No. And how do we summon? We don't have field spell. No field spell. No play. It's over. Max, yeah, just, uh, hey, I had Max C, by the way. Chi Chi grabbing our Picari. We got the full wombo combo play. What is the best turn one uninterrupted Ignister play? We pro okay, so we're gonna be using this as disruption. I said uh, uninterrupted, but I done goofed. Clock and Torby is definitely disruption, and we're disrupting. So don't write this down. You just got screwed. <laughs> Clock is gonna be reborn from the graveyard. We're gonna be activating the big welcome before we could even use the triple tactics talent. Summoning a lovely pop in the Dark Templar, and damn. Come forth lovely from the hand, deck, or grave is what the big welcome does. The regular welcome is just the deck. Torby's gonna be triggered as we wipe out that Dark Templar. Double Imperm, yeah, we have Field Spell. We got bodies on the field. Triple Tactics Talent going for the draw to play. Hey, circular plan B. What? Dark Templar recycled back in the extra deck? Dark Infant to trigger the Dark Templar? What the? The Torby already activated, so we can't chain link block the Dark Templar. Wow. That is shocking. I'm so happy you got disrupted. Triple reborn from the grave. Recycling your one of Dark Templar back into the extra deck. That is insanity. When Pegasus is here, triggering the Buru to reborn the Picari, linking this all up into our singularity and set our three back row end. Nice. Now the singularity, target cards your opponent controls are in the graveyard up to the number of different cards, return them to the hand. That is a hard once per turn. The monster this points to is destroyed or sent to the graveyard, so it does not trigger the effect. We did not use Singularity before ending our turn. That's kind of interesting. I guess we didn't want to spin back. Singularity, what the heck? Just Singularity doing nothing. That's interesting. Imperm, negate the lovely. Singularity gone just like that. Lovely trying to recycle a card in the graveyard to be used again. Pot of E with that draw to play. This is anyone's duel actually. Clock's gonna make... Wow, Biggie, did you time out? I think you timed out. I think you were timing out, right? Maybe it took a lot of time to think about recycling Dark Templar to then resummon it. Probably. We probably had no time to even activate the Singularity. Damn. <laughs> okay. Special summoning our Cash Tier Fenrir. We are going first as Monadium.
But what do we do from here? Apollo USA. It's fine. No Meek, no level two tuner ball. We still have Baron to floor and Apollo USA. It's great. Very well done. So we turned off, you know, the Dispater. Triple Monster Negate plus Omni and Droll. What do we do? Baron to floor using up one of our four negates here. We just have Apollo USA with the triple monster negate. Carl, what the heck? Equipping, double equipping. You know, we, uh, when do we want to get negating? It, this, the activation to equip is not a hard once per turn. So you activate to equip and you negate and then you activate to equip again. And now when they're in the back row, they're not monsters. So Apollo cannot negate their back row activation. Can't negate that with Apollo. Come forth, Wakashi, Shokan into the Excel. So you would want Apollo to negate this, right? But it can't. If you correctly use the Wakashi to chain link block the Excel synchro, you can make a Baron to floor without Apollo even being able to negate. I think we should still negate the Wakashi just because uh, what else are we gonna do? Let's go, let's go. Don't negate the Peacemaker, well, we couldn't. And now we got Baron to floor. We could pop. We tried to negate the pop. We then negate the negate. We could just swing first, then pop and hold on to our negate. Goodbye to the Baron to floor. A very interesting duel. It's shocking. Turn two made a bunch of plays, and there was no real opportunity to use the droll. Imagining's dead. We need a Monodium monster. Not even a Monodium card. Is this card activatable? That's full combo. Uh, well, we don't have another card to discard with the Scareclaw, Scarecrow, that is. So, you know, this would equip and make the Scarecrow. We could search. We could then actually discard the card we search. Baron to floor negating the droll. You're not stopping our play. Get equipping. Get popping. <laughs> okay, not linking off in a Scarecrow. Grabbing our Wakashi. It, so we don't have to discard the Wakashi or the Scarecrow. Setting up the Banky. Banky gets searching. We already have our Baron to floor play, so we're not going to make the Excel start a synchro again. Peacemaker equips, summoning our scale. Scale reborn from the graveyard here as we now synchro it up into our Link. Linking into Ballista. That is going to be giving us the box. Box into the Tunneler. Piercer into the motorbike. Motorbike probably going to give us a pendulum scale. So we can pendulum summon the Wakashi back onto the field here. Locking ourselves into Super Heavy Samurai only by discarding with the Wakashi. No more non Super Heavy Samurai summons are left. The field spell is reducing us a little bit here. The Wakashi used for the synchro are going to be setting up as a pendulum scale. Grabbing the wagon for more damage on the field here. Wagon could search for the thing that gives us the double attack, right? Pop the field spell. We don't need it. It just like that. Lethal damage. Very nicely done. Very nicely done. Wakashi locking us into Super Heavy Sam only, and but we make sure we have lethal damage for doing it. Let's go. We got to play through double Baylor. Both are activatable on the same turn. We got the plan of field spell into the rhyme heart. Rhyme heart's gonna be searching for nothing as the Veiler negates. We get called by, but then double Veiler. We are going to at least be able to triple tactics talent. Probably gonna go for the draw two play. That's what I would be thinking is the play. Veiler successfully negating the rhyme heart here. No ball for you. No ball. That is unfortunate. When you got no ball. Hmm. So what do we go? I think we have the talent draw two. Go for that draw two. No Ash negate. That is great, but we have no play whatsoever after drawing two. Droplet and Ash. Is that going to be enough? When do we negate? You know, we probably would be searching like a motorbike here, right? And then if he already has the motorbike, search him for the Peacemaker. Ash on the Peacemaker would be great. So if we hold Ash for Peacemaker, Droplet for the Baron to floor, negating the Peacemaker play if they're even able to make that, that's probably going to be ideal. Scarecrow, mm, going to use Droplet here, as this does help stop them from making a Baron to floor, ensuring that the Ash will be able to negate the Peacemaker. Almost ensuring it. We have already used up our normal summon here. So Bakashi will be on the fields. And then we'll be able to add. 
Ash negates, not the Peacemaker. Very interesting. So if we really want to protect our Peacemaker play, what we would do is we could add a booster, booster special summon, go into the Excel, start a synchro play, make the Baron to floor, then commit with the Peacemaker, which I guess we were fearing for that happening. Yeah? But, uh, like, we could do that anyway. <laughs> He's doing exactly what I said. Well, setting up the protection with the Peacemaker, we had Ash, we had Droplet, and... It's like we had nothing. I This is full combo. I don't understand. I mean, I, I do understand. I, I feel like maybe our negates could have been better. This is Baron to Floor. This is Peacemaker onto the Scarecrow, into the Scales, into Reborn from the Graveyard, into Ballista, into the Box. Let's go. If we're playing the Spring in Package, we could still search for our card here. You know, we can actually we can search for stealth if we want. We could do box, stealth, stealth, summon, and then we can make the Clifford to still search for Therion. Yeah, uh, so you gotta think, how do we make the Clifford if this is not it? So that's not gonna be making the Clifford. So we're not Cliffording, but we could spring in. Box trigger, grabbing the Carl. Ballista popping the Wakushi into the extra deck for an additional Pendulum Summon. Big Pendulum Summon play. Boarload Savage Dragon is here. I mean, we're going to be just be setting up lethal. This is lethal damage. Wagon can attack while on defense. After reducing the Mad Lad to zero attack with the effect of the Ballista, also giving us that additional monster to summon off of that Pendulum Summon. You saw it here. Ash, Droplet, did nothing. Damn. We have just Serenir for our disruption, but against Makanko, is there really anything we could disrupt? Arrow the Bark Light? Oh, geez, you know? I did not know that Makanko going first was that scary. It's a really, it's, it's generally a turn two deck. They don't really cook turn one. Okay. Branded, lost, fusion, deploying our Cartesia onto the field which protects our Alibur from a Veiler or Impermanence. I don't like, I don't really like this turn one too much. Uh, Mirror Jade's been turned off. Okay. Hmm. We do have the Mercurial Negate and we have Banishment. All right, equipping the water onto the Mirror Jade. Now, it states that what's gonna happen here is you have to, let's read this. You summon a monster, then you can return the opponent's monster. So by using the banishment to make the monster leave the field, it doesn't have to return it in order to resolve the effect, but this card has to remain face up on the field to resolve its effect. So it's not gonna summon if you make the Mirror Jade leave the field. So we do lose the Makanko summon from the deck if we get the Mirror Jade off the field right here. By summoning the Ad Libitum, dealing with the Makanko water equip, double Masquerade, that's 1200 damage per activation as the Ad Libitum reborns the Mirror Jade. So now this is good. This is great. Mirror Jade's activatable. And you know, where are the Kaijus? Kaiju's a big part of Makanko for a lot of the ways to play it. Uh-oh. Double 600 on every activation. Grabbing the TTT. TTT is choosing to take control, possibly of the Mirror Jade. Tributing for the side frame driver to then battle over one of the Masquerades, as we're now only going to be burning for 600 damage per activation. We have pre-preparation of rights, adding our Ohime. Ohime is going to search our deck for the Makanko Kagura. Makanko Kagura is going to ensure that we can pop cards in the field non-targeting. So by summoning our Ohime, we're going to be able to pop how many cards? Just one. One pop. Yeah, yeah, well, uh, we're scooping because, you know, I guess that wasn't that great. Destroy cards your opponent controls up to the number of equipped cards with different names in your grave. We have 
uh, similar to game one, but we're not gonna surrender early. Divine are sending the Herald, searching for the Ohime. Ohime, come to me, great Makanko ceremony, which could special summon the Ohime, plus send a Makanko card from the deck to the grave. We have Garura in the grave to the effect of the Nadir Servant to draw a card and search for the Maximus. Come forth, Ohime, and get ready for a Maximus play. The ceremony sending from the deck. Our Makanko Water, which the Ohime can equip onto a monster on the field. Returning that monster back to the hand to summon from the deck a Hu Lee, making our entire field of Makanko cards completely untargetable. So if you want to target, you can't target anything except the face down. If you want to destroy a card by card effect, we could destroy the Makanko equip card, but not the Hu Lee. Now, Mirror Jade non target gets rid of the Hu Lee. But if they summon a Mirror Jade, we could negate the Mirror Jade with the Rivalry. Rivalry can take control or negate a monster on the field. Branded opening. In the main phase here, we have Quem sending from the deck to the grave, sending that Branded Fusion. Tragedy recycling the Branded Fusion to set it onto the field to activate it. We now have Alubur, which will get negated by the Rivalry, equipping an Axe of Fool from the deck. Very well done. No search for thee. Flip up the Branded Fusion into the Ash Negate. Now we have Triple Tactics Thrust to add from our deck to our hand any spell. Not Quick Play, though. What's going to be? Our Fusion Deployment. Fusion Deploy, Reveal Fusion, Summon a Fusion Material from the deck. That's going to be our Albaz. Albaz on Summon, Discard to Fuse the opponent's field, fusing with the untargetable Ohime to make our Albion. You stopped our Branded Fusion, but you did not stop my Mirror Jade Summon. As you now summon a Lubalion off of the Albion, triggering the Lubalion, discarding the Branded White, also triggering the Mercurio to search our deck for a Branded Monster. Albaz Monster, that is. We have Albion, which could draw a card from the deck. And our non-target Monster Banish on the untargetable Hugh Lee is here. Send a Retribution to randomly draw into our Cartesia, which cannot be special summoned since we don't have an Albaz monster in the graveyard. The Fallen Albaz, that is. Branded in white, though. Using with our field in hand to make a Despian Prescanian. Okay. Triggering the Quem to reborn the Cartesia. Rivalry's not really doing anything here. Recycling the Axe of Fools to be used next turn. Prescanian's gonna be banishing the Garura, but cannot summon it because it was not properly summoned. Sure, just banish it. And we do not have lethal damage yet. 7,700, make this over 8,000. With the Mirror Jade non-target monster banished, we officially have game. Sending the ad libitum, using the Mirror Jade to banish the untargetable and indestructible by battle and card effect monster. Into game we go. Not summoning the Prescanian with the effect of the Brandon Red, which would make it so it cannot attack directly. Branded in white does not have that restriction. Very nicely done from both players. Thank you. Maxi here. Very well done. And damn. Ending the turn. That is wild. I don't think that summoning the, you know, huh. I feel like you still Wakushi into Baguska, maybe. I, I feel like you should Wakushi first so that they don't maxi to play around Gamma, so they don't maxi, then you normal summon Soul Piercer, then they maxi, then you Baguska, right? I feel like that would have been the better play, but you know, as we could see, they got Droplet for the Baguska anyway. Now, we did not cook under that maxi. We have Rhymeheart searching for the ball, ball come forth and summon into the Trisucto. We are waiting with that effect, Valor. Baylor being whipped out right here, right now. You will not be able to. Actually, I will because the Baylor will get fingered. Finger the Veil, and we have zero disruption after this. Can Monadium set up lethal damage? Surely. I, I, we have everything. We have the balls. We have the Scareclaw Field Smell. We also have any search with the Vsauce, which is going to be the Obsidian. Obsidian could search for the Monadium Field Spell. Lightheart, this is a bait and a gate. We don't need it. We got the Scareclaw grabbing the Rykart. Rykart searching for the arrival to reborn from the grave. Obsidian popping the Lightheart, grabbing the Monadium Field Spell. Monadium Field Spell gonna be searching for the Vsauce. We're going to Obsidian special summon the Vsauce onto the field. Lightheart reborn because we have a Vsauce. 
Synchro into the Baron to floor. Arrival reborn in the right card to now make our cross sheep, to then make the Astra loud, to then reborn from the graveyard our right card. Elf is going to be reborning from the graveyard our ball. Baron to floor gonna pop the ball to summon a ball from the deck and reborn the ball from the graveyard. That's right. TCG OCG players don't know about this play because Elf is banned. So this is a great way to go into Dispater. Pop the ball to summon two balls. Nicely done. Very well done. This is what you do turn one. A very good turn one play. Excel start us into the Dispater. Dispater reborn a banished monster here. We're at 8,600 damage here on the field. Uh, all right, we got Vsauce. And you missed the opportunity to activate the Vsauce effect of when destroying a monster by battle, gaining the attack or defense of that monster, whichever is higher. Lethal damage. Damn. Damn, damn, damn. The problem with this play is Elf could not be used for a length to turn its summon, so you cannot make a good Apollo USA off of this, but you know, you do everything else. Let's see. Do you Droll here? Well, because you have Ash, Ash stops Gamma, you could disrespect the Gamma when you have Ash. Only when you have Ash is it okay to just Throw your drolls and maxis like a wild fool. Do we do it? No, still respecting the gamma, still. Even though we had Ash to stop gamma, we didn't want to do that. Add Wakashi, now we droll. All right, let's see what we could do under the droll. Wakashi summoning itself onto the field, can't search with the bank, he's still discarding with the Scarecrow because we still have a Baron to floor here. Hmm. Should we have early drolled because we had Ash? If we have in our mind to just never max your droll with, without them having a body on the fields, then, you know, we lose the opportunity to potentially stop a bear in the floor when we had an Ash. Okay. Which would have just paid off so much better because they didn't even have Gamma. We got Reichhardt adding, and we are ready to maxi ourselves. We have Ash to stop the maxi, but now they have Baron to floor to stop the Ash. Damn, this did not work out. Droll wasn't as effective as we would have liked it to be, and then we could not stop the Max C. It all comes down to those two hand traps. Light heart for the field spell here. We could fully cook under the Max C now that the Baron to Floor has used up its negate. So a zero disruption field. They are drawing into hand traps though, and super heavy samurai more so than any other deck. Fill to the brim with hand traps. We have Crow, Veiler, Veiler, Ash. Ash is activatable. When are we doing it? DD Crow ready to banish the monster he's trying to reborn. Baron to floor, negate the DD Crow banish. Veiler negate the negate. I do not think so, mate. And we still have Veiler. And we still have Ash. You real it's really difficult to take the maxi challenge against Super Heavy Samurai. More so than any other deck, I feel like Maxi is most effective in Super Heavy Sam because of all of the hand traps you could draw into. There's probably Ghost Ogres in the deck still also, probably even Ghost Bell. Baron on Baron action, cleaning up the field here. Now, the reframing does not work unless we control a Synchro. What are we doing? We have another field spell, which cannot be you. We, we just have nothing. Absolutely. <laughs> this is what Maxi does. Benki only activatable if we have a Super Heavy Sam on the field. Wakashi is not activatable if we have a Benki. So if you have a way to pop the Benki, let's say the Ballista, pop Benki, then you can special summon Wakashi. Or Baron to floor, pop Benki. Those are multiple ways to just get rid of it. We are, the, and then you still need a Benki in the deck. The Benki is a Garnet. Reborning our bike, there is the Ballista. Ballista pop the Benki, also adding the box. Maxi's supposed to keep the deck in check, but uses it better than most decks. That is true. The card that keeps it in check also empowers the deck. But there was a tournament where Maxi was banned, and Super Heavy Samurai was the most dominant deck by far without Maxi. Cliff for Genius, again, you know, did not need to Ballista to pop the Benki, but it would have been a little bit better if we did. We got the Borload Savage Dragon, equip the Link from the graveyard here. We are just quickly setting up lethal damage. 
Unicorn on summon, spin the light heart, Regulus come forth and summon, and just like that we have over 8,000 damage but we keep on cooking with the Axis Code Talker. Is it a good idea to reveal that you play Axis Code Talker? Because a lot of people don't actually play it and you know let me back that up with some analytics. I think it's like 50-50. I think I play it, I forget, because I'm playing multiple different versions of the deck here. Axis Code and Super Heavy. 26%. The majority do not play it. I don't think we're really playing differently knowing that the opponent's playing Axis Code Talker anyway, though. All right, let's go. Oh, we're going first also. Damn. No hand traps. The deck with the most hand traps did not open up a hand trap. What the hell is that? Reborning double balls. So what do you do if you don't have the Vsauce in the hand? You bear into floor, pop the ball, you summon double ball. You still get to summon the Excel start of Synchro. Reborn the ball, Shokan into the Dispater. So this field is still exactly this, even without the Vsauce. It's still this field. But then this is gonna turn it into the additional Chaos Angel. So without the Vsauce and the extra arrival, this would be your field. Dispater, Baron, and Mascarina. The Chaos Angel's making our Synchros unaffected from monster effects, and the Dispater can chain to a monster effect to destroy. The Mascarina could link off into Milk Master. I'm going to leak your extra deck. Unicorn. Unicorn or Apollo. And we could make Apollo with Sprite Elf. So what we could do is you could activate Mascarina, chain Sprite Elf Reborn from the graveyard, and that Mascarina Elf and the Reborn monster will be a decent sized Apollo. Motorbike gets searching, Ash Negate. When you're playing against Super Heavy Samurai, they are quite a linear deck. You're not gonna have to play around cards like Called By if you ever think about playing around that. You don't have to play around Triple Tactics Talent because you know they're not playing that either. No Thrust, no Imperm. The Baron to Floor and Mascarina are also untargetable here. Reborn the ball, getting ready for... Okay, we're going right into the Apollo USA, as I said. Now, a great way to deal with Apollo when its attack is not that large is to attack over it, but we can't because the Chaos Angel protects it from battle. So we have Monster Negate, 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 Omni Negate, destroy a monster, and uh, so five disruptions plus our synchros can't be affected by monster effects. Did not Apollo the search because we're going to drill you. <laughs> okay. This is an attempt to make Zeus. And Dispater says no. We do not want you to Zeus us. Get even a uh, Baguska in D, which would affect the opposing non link monsters here. You should negate the effect, not the activation of the Wakashi. So the effect would be to summon itself onto the field, which is a hard once per turn. So if we have another Wakashi, we would be able to use it. We are now linking this off into the Scarecrow. Scarecrow discard the Reborn from the graveyard here. Free Apollo negates. I mean, there's not really much we could do here. Got drolled, got ashed, got super disrupted. We had zero hand traps to stop this full power turn one that even had double extenders. It had an additional arrival and Vsauce on top of a full combo play. And just like that, lethal damage, Monadium knocking out a Super Heavy Samurai from the tournament. Branded in high spirit, send the Serenir grabbing the Albion. Albion's gonna send a Branded Spell Trap from the decks of the Graveyard, which will be our Branded Fusion. Send Brain Infusion, draw our card, and let's recycle that Brain Infusion the graveyard back to our hand. Exo Sister versus Branded. This will be interesting. Maxi in response to that Branded Fusion as we Ash the Maxi, as we had no Ash for the Brain Infusion. Now, So you could grass 
mill this and then set it up onto the field. Should every branded deck be playing this to beat Super Heavy Samurai or what? I already have the out for this as a Super Heavy Sam player. I, I showed you my deck list, which outs it inherently. I can show you again for anyone new to the stream. You cannot Cartesia with player priority at the start of the main phase. This is the opponent saying, I want to end main phase. I want to go into the battle phase. I want to potentially end my turn. If you didn't know this, you don't actually tell your opponent that you're entering battle. You only say you're ending the main phase. So they should not know if you're entering the battle or ending the turn. But this is for the evenly matched. Sanctifier Dragon is here. We actually don't have an out to the evenly matched. But we do. <laughs> Sanctifier stops it. Not only did we stop evenly matched, but you actually can't activate Martha now. If you control no monsters or only Xyz monsters, you can Martha. So evenly dead, Martha dead, all thanks to Sanctifier in the battle phase. Unfreaking believable, that's a scoop. <laughs> Damn. We were better off just shotgunning the Martha. That was wild, that is crazy. I don't think Branded Dio even knew what they did because you don't get to see their hand, right? They scooped with them activating nothing. Now Branded Dio knows. Pax searching for an Exorcister. We have the Martha. This is where you want to Ash. Bob of the Grave, Finger of the Droll. You will not prevent me from further adding as we do definitely want to add more cards in the deck to our hand here. Martha will be a free special summon. Downside is you are locked into Exosister monsters only, but that's okay. As we make Castapel, Castapel will search for a monster. And then we're gonna be searching for a Exosister trap, which will be even further disruption here. Michaelis will be searching for the trap. And we'll count up the disruptions we have here. We have, I believe, four banishes. Triple banish, I believe. So non-target banish into banish into banish into ban uh, four banishes, four. And Pax, if we add a sister who is a sister to a sister in the grave, that sister could special summon on add, thus be triggered off of the opponent manipulating a card from either player's graveyard, which could turn into another disruption. Let's see what happens. Albaz, we gotta banish that. That's a straight up banish. Detach to banish, non-target. We have three more banishes. Not detaching the Michaelis. Ooh, not taking control. You have to control an Exosister to activate Returnia. This could jump off the field in response to the talent, but then you could take control of the newly summoned monster or they just don't summon a monster. Uh, yeah, I don't know about that. Ash would not be usable on talents trying to take control because you do choose what effect you're activating on the activation. Talent's a huge counter to Exosister. It's, it's one of the main ways to break this field. Shocking. Oh my gosh. Goodbye to the Banishment. You had no play if you yoinked her. Well, if you play Zeus, but uh, we probably don't play Zeus in a branded deck. Yeah. And, uh, okay. But, you know, you, you kind of break their field a bit. Uh, you know, I guess draw two is the way. Possibly. All right. You know, ideally you have other plays on top of breaking their field. Let's go to game three. Alu Burr for the Brandon High Spirits. We have zero disruption here. Let's skip on through the end field. Beautifully done. So what is our disruptions? We have non-target monster banish. We have grab a monster from the graveyard, then fuse into maybe a chimera to pop multiple cards in the field. We have negate a special summon. We have about just triple disruption plus a floodgate, which is not really going to floodgate us unless it could. If you only have one back row to set and they in response to your set card, pop it, get rid of it, then uh, wait, isn't this really good with that new card that was just announced? The Diabel, Diabel, right? Wouldn't Rainbow work well with this? 
Your opponent could not activate cards that were not set. If they set a card, you then pop it. So you pop their set card and then you sit on the five rainbow. Maybe that's a thing, right? Pendulum Floodgate. All right. Let's go. Martha being negated by the Retribution. Now the Retribution negates the activation, but the Martha says you could only use the effect once per turn. We used it even though the activation was negated. Thus, the second Martha is no good. Returning back to Aldas Fusion Monster and the Graveyard back into the deck. Goodbye to Martha. You can't activate unless you set your return. And what did you want to do? You wanted to target itself, then equip it with the Magistus from the extra deck. We're going to banish you before you could even attempt to activate. <laughs> Rinbrum could reborn Aldas, fusing with the opposing fields. Uh, it's just no chance. Damn. Set four pass. We're holding on to the droplet to discard with the super polymerization. We can negate all monsters in the field. We can negate any summon, spell, or trap. We could fuse with the field. Let's go. You think maybe you set droplet and keep eradicator in the hand, maybe? We'll see, you'll see. <laughs> what? Why do we, we have rescue ace impulse? What are we playing? Huh? Oh, it's a Dynamorphia deck in the top 16. Let's go. Okay, we're summoning the Impulse here. Very nice. Impulse is a card that can negate an unaffected X purely Nor because you choose an effect monster on the field and that monster cannot be activated by the opponent. You're affecting the opponent, not the monster. It's a really interesting interaction. All righty. Uh, you know, we didn't want a Solemn Judgment, the Impulse. Intact is no good because we need to have a Dynamorphic card in order to negate a, dynam uh, a monster effect. You're playing Super Heavy Sam with Impulse. That is interesting. It's because this is a hand trap in a way. When your opponent activates a monster effect on the field, you could tribute this card from your hand to Special Summon a Rescue Ace from your deck. We are activating the Wakashi, summoning itself onto the field. Unfortunately, it's a level three. Uh, can we really do much with a level three? Skill drain with the negate. Now, I was just talking about the Malong Synchro, which does deal with skill drain. Otherwise, how do we deal with skill drain? It's gonna be difficult. Uh, we just beat him down, <laughs> which we may actually win beating down through a skill drain. Solemn Judgment does not care about your life point total. It's going to half it no matter what. Finally, we got something, but it's negated by our own skill drain. Impulse chaining to the Therizia, so we're going to see what we get to summon from the deck here. Droplet dodging the skill drain. So we do not get negated. We do get our Dynamorphia card. Solemn Judgment, unfortunately, could not negate a monster effect here. Now, what's cool about this card, that you'd be thinking, why are we playing the Rescue Ace Impulse? It's all about the Rescue Ace Fire Attacker. So what happens is when your opponent adds a card from their, hand, from their deck to their hand, you could draw two cards and discard a card. So it helps you draw into hand traps, helps you draw into Droll, helps you draw into Max C. So this may be the best way to play Super Heavy Samurai with the whole format being around Max C and Droll. Discarding the intact to fuse into a Moo Dragon. And, uh, Brute? Brute? Why do we have Brute? Pay half your life points, destroy a Dynamorphia monster you control, and one card your opponent controls? Huh? Okay, let's go. Because we control a Super Heavy Sam, we're gonna be searching our deck. Now, Super Heavy Sams like to attack while on defense, which they can't do under Skill Dream. And there's an interesting ruling here. I think a lot of you know this ruling. Oh, wait, Axis Code Talker is an out to the skill drain. And yeah, Axis Code Talker, but I don't think anything else really. The Clifford Genius states that this Link Summon card is unaffected from spell slash trap effects and the activate effects of other Link monsters. So it's unaffected from skill drain. Yes, but it's not. If it's already face up on the field, you flip up skill drain, it's unaffected. But if Skill Drain is already face up on the field, it negates the effect of being unaffected. Thank you, Konami. We got our Pendulum Shokan set up. We are negating a Pendulum Scale. 
Ain't no way. All right. The brute's dead. Pop a monster you control and one card your opponent controls. Equipping the Peacemaker. Peacemaker normally summons scales, but the scales would be negated. Can Benki even attack while on defense if not negated? I don't think so. It does not have any effect like that. That's a large D. Pot of Duality, digging for the top three cards off the top of our deck here. Oh, we got Droplet. Droplet only reduces attack, not defense. 1900 attack Mu Dragon is too difficult to deal with. Banky searching because we control any super heavy Sam. We're just setting it up. Now, the out for skill drain is access code talker banishing itself off the field to non target destroy the skill drain. That is the way. So, a pendulum summon is the out. If we could pendulum summon four bodies onto the field, we could banish pop the skill drain. Or goes in matchful, make it so you can't really do that. We got Baguska in attack. Baguska beat down Droplet as the Baguska's untargetable. Untargetable, non target, reduce the Baguska. Goes a match locking us into a single attribute here. I promise Dynamorphia is more than this. Uh, hmm. Let's speed this up. <laughs> we haven't had to really sit here and do nothing during a Floodgate match for a while. I, I think a year ago we had to do this a lot when Eldritch was more popular. Oh, we got 2,800 beatdown, let's go! This is something. This is something, we're locked into Earth-type monsters only. Earth it up, Earth it up. Double attack on the wagon. DD Crow on the intact. So intact, oh boy. What this says is that during damage calculation, if you're less than 2,000 life or you're at 2K, if you would take battle damage, you could banish those cards from the graveyard. You take no battle damage from that battle as we're attacking for lethal and the intact would have stopped it. Wow. Defeating Floodgates through pure beatdown and even remembering to use DD Crow on the intact. Very well done. This is it. So I read in the chat, people said no, this is not good. Well, this will show us if it's good. We're gonna draw two, discard one. Is this good? I think I wanna play this. I wanna play it. We're gonna draw two, discard one right now. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, that wasn't good. We didn't, we didn't add, we set. Oh, shy. This is not good. This is not good. This is bad. It's only if the opponent adds a card to their hand. I forgot Therizia sets and doesn't add. So uh, that was bad, but it's a level six, level four tuner, which uh, the motorbike is level four tuner. That's a Baron to floor. Early Baron to floor before committing to our plays. That's something, Wakashi. So discard, add Wakashi, Wakashi summon, make a Baron to floor right then and there. That makes me like it more. I, I do like that. And FTA Scar, I, I'm gonna cheat. I'm gonna look at your extra deck because I wanna know is there any other synergy with your fire attacker? I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking at the extra deck of the, okay, it's like a normal extra deck, okay. Bike it up, not using intact. We're waiting with intact to negate a monster effect, just like that because we control a Dynamorphia card, negate the Therion, I do not think so. Intacting it up, very well done. Wakashi into a Baron to floor play, we have Solemn Judgment, negating the Wakashi. Now, you may be thinking, why are they not negating the effect of Wakashi? Some cards can't. Psalm Judgment can negate the activation, not the effect of Wakashi. So if we had another Wakashi, it would be activatable and it would be able to summon. Yep, can only use the, this effect once per turn and we're not even negating the effect, we're negating the activation of the card. Get ready, get ready. Now the opponent must have chose to end the main phase and that is only then when we can activate the Frenzy within the main phase. Frenzy it up. Frenzy's gonna be setting up our Floodgate. Floodgate it up. Sending from the extra deck and deck to make our Rex Term. Rex Term is here. Rex Term and the damage step could change the opponent's attack to our life points. And we're gonna do it during the end phase just to lower our life points down to 500 here. Battle we go. You know, it'd be good to do so mainly within the damage step to play around some other cards that could be activated. 
only outside of the damage step and not within it. Can't activate on the field. Cannot, if you are 250 attack or higher, you cannot activate. So how do you play around Rex turn? You generally will have a trigger effect that could be activatable on summon because then Rex term can't disallow you from activating your trigger effect if your attack is less than 250. Now, Scarecrow is not a trigger effect. You have to activate it at, in an open game state, which means the Rex term could change the attack to your life points, stopping it from activating. Let's go, let's go. And we're gonna see that right here, right now. So the Soul Piercer is adding. This is when we Rex term change the attack. If we want to stop it from activating, if we care, maybe we don't care that much about it activating. Down to 125 life points. What is going on? This is game three. Wait, oh, you say, oh, this is going to take us to game three. You're right, you're right, yep. Renzi, come forth and summon. And droplet. Activate the Frenzy, send the Frenzy, negate and summon. Damn. Very well done. Very well done. Uh, the Rex term is a cool Floodgate. That's a uh, Floodgate we could cheer for. Just not Skill Drain or Gozen Match. That's not cool. That's cringe. But Rex term is cool. Soul Piercer into our scarecrow we are searching it up we have no hand traps whatsoever is it possible to beat scarecrow uh, i should say super heavy sam without max c or troll untargetable boar load Omni negate, Omni negate, Omni negate. Just triple negate. Just triple negate. That's all. Those are the public disruptions here. Let's go. Surely we could play through this. Now, Therizia can't be ashed if it's setting into the back row and not actually adding it. But it, even if it could get ashed, it, it's actually bad that it can't be ashed because that would be bait. You want to bait the ash because then the frenzy gets ashed. Oh, uh, you know, maybe it's good that it can't get ashed because we could set up a intact to protect our frenzy which is what we are going to do right here and the boar load negates that setup in the intact being a counter trap would be the main way to stop them so i guess what we want to do here is we want to the boar load therion and baron de floor are all activatable and all of these cards are negatable so i think we try to Frenzy, Brute, Domain, then goes and match after the triple negate. Is that the play? Or do we prioritize the Frenzy? It's either Frenzy or goes and that needs to go through. Let's see. Domain has to be negated. You have to. Oh my gosh, you let them go in the main phase. Well, you have to, you have to, you have to. Okay. Yeah, we're going to Domain first. You have to negate this. Oh my gosh, Ash. Yep. So we didn't even get the triple negate. We have three negates plus Ash. That's all four back row. Unfreaking believable. Nothing we could do. We still have two more negates. <laughs> Negate! Intact being a counter trap would have stopped all this. Goes in. Negate! <laughs> that's it. There was a chance for Scar to screw this up. And uh, maybe Scar knew better, but how would you screw this up? This negates the effect of a card, so if you use Therion King Regulus to negate a Gozen match or a Skill Drain, it doesn't negate it. I know it's like you're negating it, but it doesn't negate it. it. It does nothing. You're negating the effect of the activation and what does Gozen do on activation? Nothing. So if you had used it on Gozen, it would have been a big screw up. Boar load negates the activation though. Activation negate. After the end of the chain, it will be gone. Ash negate. Domain. Be gone, mate. Boar load. Negate. Goodbye to all the back row. Lethal damage. We need it intact. We des We had the intact set. We had it. But that boar load negate on the intact set, had Dynamorphia gone first, I think they would have won. That was a game-winning game, game winning hand if they went first.
And that is the end of the top 16 video. We're going to be continuing at the top eight and grand finale of the next video. Thank you very much for supporting this video. Let's go.